Hi, I'm Jesse Estes. And I'm Tomas Estes. And we're here today to answer your questions on Bar Academy TV. All right, so the first question we've got here is, uh, how are things going? How are things going, Bob? What a great question to start with. When, uh, when I am in Greece, I feel at home, I feel comfortable. I love being here with the Greek brothers and sisters. And uh, I find Athens such an exciting bar scene that I'm filled with life and stimulation. That's great, we're here in the, in the sunshine. We've got a little, uh, some tans slash burns today. Uh, enjoying the sunshine and uh, couldn't be happier uh, to be here in, in Athens with, with all of you. In Greece, we have a lot of agave plants. We've seen them. Should we start producing Greek mezcal? So one, one important uh, part of this question is that if we want to use the term mezcal, we have to adhere by the, the norms, the laws put in place by the Mezcal Regulatory Council. Uh, within the denomination of origin, uh, Greece, at least for the time being, does not fall in the Mezcal denomination of origin. So we could uh, try and produce some agave spirits here, but we would not legally be able to call it Mezcal. So it would be called an agave distillate, or we would have a, a new name for it here in Greece. What's your favorite movie? My favorite movie has been the original Blade Runner. Why? Because I found it so mind-opening. My, my favorite film, uh, I, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna skirt the question and say my favorite director is probably Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> I do, thank you. I, I just love you. TNT. I think TNT is a great serve because it's easy. You don't have to have uh, even any bar equipment, a sh cocktail shaker. You can just build it, very easy to make, easy to serve, quick to make, easy to drink. Uh, we also believe in the agave world that anything that gin can do, tequila and mezcal can do better. <laughs> Here's a very good question. So we planned this specifically, we planned this a long time, obviously Cinco de Mayo in our calendar uh, for parties and events is important for us. Cinco de Mayo and also Ocho de Mayo, so 8th of May. We're uh, here in Athens for Cinco de Mayo. We had a very nice uh, event last night at the Clumsies. Uh, again, this is an, an important event for us globally, but we chose to spend it here in Athens because this is such an important place for us, for us personally and for the brand. Uh, and then Ocho de Mayo, I think is on Wednesday in a couple of days. Uh, we will be in Cyprus with your uh, Cypriot brothers and sisters there. Do you accept the title Tequila Guru? Yes, absolutely. Now, a word like guru could be interpreted in different ways. If I think of being a tequila guru, and it means that I am happy to spread the word about the good things of tequila, it is a big pleasure to have that title, yes. Not only do I accept it, but Embrace it. How, how many years have you been involved in the tequila business? It has to do with intensity. Um, when I first opened my first bar in Amsterdam in 1976, I had already been busy doing some research, let's say two years. So let's say since 1974 until present day, however many years that is, that's the time that I have been paying attention to tequila, which means drinking it, studying it, talking about it, promoting it in my own bars, in bar shows, in trade articles written, and with a book. So a, a long time, and it has increased until today with our family having our own tequila business. And <clears throat> the things that I like to deal with, with tequila, is finding new things, new creative ways to talk about tequila and to bring tequila in different forms to the market in ways that other people have not thought of yet. And so how many years have you been drinking tequila then? 
I first started drinking tequila in 1960. What about tequila or mezcal? Tequila or mezcal? For me, it's tequila and mezcal. Let's see, this is uh, a more complicated question. What's the situation with agave plants? Are there enough to cover the global tequila demand? With tequila, there are not enough. Um, because the blue agave, which we use to make tequila, and we must, uh, and only that one, there are not enough right now. And um, if we want to have more, we can plant all we want today, tomorrow, this whole year, but we won't have them ready to use for six and a half to eight years. So um, that's, that's part of the complexity. And um, the tequila cycle, the, the agave growing period and the tequila uh, demand and supply is very inflexible and creates problems every cycle. So yes, we have a problem now. Do you have friends that hate tequila? I would say that choose not to drink tequila. I'm okay with that because nobody's perfect. <laughs> you forgive them. I forgive them, Their yes. Their imperfections. Yes. I, I very much appreciate that bartenders are getting attention, that they are, uh, that they have a, a good status, hopefully good working conditions like good pay. And I think the creativity amongst bartenders uh, around the world is quite good because there's a good connection with uh, Instagram and Facebook. So that ideas and um, creative thoughts can mingle very uh, quickly and easily and create new energies. <laughs> what is the most annoying thing about the <laughs> All right. <laughs> this, was this a girl that turned this in? Yeah, must be. <laughs> <laughs> we can leave that in the, in the final, uh, the bloopers. Um, no, anything yeah. annoying, we, we obviously work very closely together. We get along very well. Um, if, if, if I don't stop you talking or no one stops you talking, <laughs> like one time in Shanghai at a brunch event, the, the manager asks, hey, Tomat, you know, no, sorry, you asked the manager, how long should I go for? And he told you, take as long as you want. And I think you took eight or nine hours. We did. So, well, which was a great, great event, but uh, if no one stops you, you'll, you'll, you'll carry on forever, I think. Yes. Which is great, which is also a fantastic quality. So not really annoying at all. And for me, for Jesse, it is not annoying with Jesse himself. It is the conditions around Jesse that I don't get to see him as much as I would like to. For instance, this trip here to Athens is a wonderful experience to work together. I learned from Jesse. I think he learns from me. And uh, I wish that, that there could be more of that. But Thanks. That's, yes. Uh, so the next question is for me. Uh, Jesse, how does it feel to follow in the footsteps of a man like Tomas Estes? Um, it's, I feel like I'm following in my dad's footsteps, but I'm also carving my own way in, in, in some respects. But certainly, it's, uh, they're big shoes to fill. Uh, and again, I don't necessarily look to fill those shoes. I look to create uh, my own place in, in our family business and my own place in, in the industry. I find the, my experience with that the same, that you make your own identity, you make your own path. And uh, it, it seems complementary with what I do, yet distinctly unique for you. So guys, thank you very much for, for all the very thoughtful questions. I mean, we re we've really enjoyed uh, 
kind of uh, being challenged by some of the questions and having to think differently with, with other questions. Uh, but thank you for, for putting in the, the thought and the effort to, to send these in to us. This has been a lot of fun uh, to be here in Athens to deal with these questions and um, see you back here in the Athens Bar Show, which we think and so many other people feel is the premier, meaning the best bar show in the world best right bar now. Show in the world. Which really says a lot about Athens and Greece, I think. And we're not the only people in the industry saying that. Correct. For sure. Ευχαριστούμε πάρα πολύ τον Τζέσι και τον Μασέστε σε αυτό το πρώτο international video μας Q&A, πείτε το όπως θέλετε. Ευχαριστούμε πάρα πολύ για τις ερωτήσεις. Γράψτε στα σχόλια ό,τι θέλετε να ρωτήσετε ή εάν σας άρεσε το βίντεο. Και μέχρι την επόμενη φορά κάντε subscribe και εμείς θα τα πούμε. Ciao!